Hey guys, even here, we are four freaking days out of one of the best Mr. Olympias of all time. It feels unreal, but it's right around the corner. It is about to go down and updates of bodybuilders are getting more frequent. And what is more interesting is that they are changing so rapidly during the peak week time. And as they are changing, my prediction in my head might be changing as well. And I'm not gonna change it. I said what I said. We'll see what's gonna happen, how accurate I am. But based on what I saw in the next couple of updates that I'm gonna show you in a second, I don't know. I'm not so sure what's gonna be the outcome. So we're gonna start with this update of Nick Walker. And this is basically just another most muscular of his, but it was taken with a professional a camera. So you can clearly see what is happening in his physique. In my prediction video, I had Nick Walker winning the show, which is sort of a bold prediction because not many people have him winning, a lot of people have Big Ramy winning, and many people have Nick in fifth, or at least in top five, not me. I always had him in my top three, but I figured he might win this Mr. Olympia. We'll see if that's gonna happen, but I'm pretty sure that all of you guys, even the guys that disagree with me about Nick's placement, I'm pretty sure that all of us see the same things on his physique, like we all see how big he is, how grainy he is, how conditioned and detailed he is, how thin his skin is, how hard, how dry he is, and how much of a freak this guy absolutely is. So I'm pretty sure we all can agree about that. And the people who don't have him winning or being top three or whatever, I feel like most of those people just don't like his structure. They just don't like the shape of his physique, which is okay, if you don't like it, that's totally fine, I mean, it's a subjective sport after all, so I understand that, but if you put everything on paper and you take the judging criteria as it is in consideration, I think it's pretty reasonable prediction that he's gonna win the show or at least be in the top spots, but I have him winning. And in this photo, in this post, he looks phenomenal, man, he looks so dry, he looks so hard, and at this point, at four days out, he looks crazy and I'm sure he's going to get better by the day. And I like that he's so transparent that he's showing us all the progress, all the process, unlike most other guys. Like we haven't really seen much from Brandon Curry or William Bonek or Big Ramy. All these guys are hiding something for whatever reason. Nick has nothing to hide. He's confident that he's going to win the Mr. Olympia. And you know what? I believe him. And as much as he is confident about winning, that's how much I am confident that he's winning this show and this is not one prediction that I'm having second thoughts about, no, I'm confident about him, there are guys that I may have mistakenly placed too low and that could be Derek Lunsford. Derek posted a back training video, he did not take his shirt off but he was posing, he was actually doing some posing and he was training in this tank top that is quite revealing. And yes, this is recent video, and you can see that he is freaking huge, massive, massive, look at this freaking back. He is definitely way bigger than he was last year, and I don't think he's as conditioned, but I think he's just conditioned enough. I think Harry knows exactly what he's doing, I think Derek is going to be just properly conditioned and bigger, fuller, much bigger and fuller than last year. The only question is how much bigger is he gonna be, really? Like 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds? I don't know. I don't think they said anything about his competition weight. It would be very interesting to hear, but since they are not bragging about it, I'm guessing it's not too impressive. So yeah, I think he's bigger than last year, but not too much. I'm guessing he's around 225. I don't think he's 230, I'm guessing 225, which is a big difference, and I mean, this back, like, there are guys that I placed above him, like Michal Krizio, for example, because of his structure, because of his front shots, and because he's taller, but Derek is going to crush him from the back. Now, in his back poses, Derek didn't look that, I mean, Derek had a flaw last year, there was a little gap between his legs, like, his legs could have been thicker, and it seems like he definitely gained a lot of muscle in his legs, too. But this back, this back is gonna be one of the best backs on that stage. I think this back is comparable to that of Brandon Curry. And you know what they say about backs and what wins the shows? So, I'm not saying he's gonna win the show, but, you know, he might beat a couple of guys because of that. Because he's going to expose uh, weak backs. And there are guys who have not great backs, like Andrew Jacked 
like Hunter Labrada, like Michal Krijo, and I had Derek place below all of them. I had Derek in my tent. So if I was going to change anything about my prediction, maybe I would place Derek higher. Maybe he would be all the way up to 7th, but I'm not going to do that. I still say Derek is going to be 10th because he's much smaller than everybody else and Olympia, especially Olympia Open, is a lot about size. And he's a shorter guy, smaller structured guy, but he has a ton of muscle, he has a great back, and it seems like he improved his physique a lot. It seems like he's much fuller. Look at this video. It seems like he's much, much fuller, rounder, bigger. I don't know what this is going to translate to the stage, but, you know, it looks promising. It looks very, very promising. You can see what his conditioning is like, but you can see it also in his face. And you can also see the look that he has. He looks like he has that killer instinct. And I just hope he's going to maintain that on Mr. Olympia stage in the open division for the first time. I hope he will stay this confident. And if he does that, he might make my prediction look silly. So why did I have Mikhail Grigio place above him? Well, because of these shots. Like, look at this freaking shot. Look at this madness right here. Like, how many guys can make a shot like this in the gym to make it look this impressive? Like, not many. Pretty much nobody. I don't think anybody has these kind of genetics. Like, these long and full muscle bellies with a ton of muscle, with all this roundness and 3D... I said this before, but to me, he looks like new and improved version of uh, Kevin Levroni, like more impressive, freakier, bigger Kevin Levroni, because he has those kind of muscle bellies, that kind of fullness, and just, you know, he, he has the freak factor, and he's a tall guy also, and it looks like he's going to be really conditioned, maybe more conditioned than Derek. So if you consider all that, how can you place him lower than top 7 in the world? I don't know, we still have to wait for a couple of days to see where does Mikhail Grigio actually stand in the world. Alright, now how about some classic physique talk? And you guys may have noticed that I haven't made a prediction video for classic physique and I don't think I'm gonna do that because, you know, it's pretty boring. Classic physique, I would do the top 5, but you already know who's gonna be top 5. I mean, we all know. Chris Bumstead, Terence Ruffin, uh, Urs Kletzinski, Ramon Dino, and then in 5th, that, that's the only part that might be interesting. It could be guys like Fabian Myers, also known as uh, Classy FM from Austria. It might be Gabriel Zanzanelli from Brazil. It might be, again, Brion Ainsley right here. Or somebody completely new, Chang Kang too. There are a lot of guys that might be in that fifth, and I can't just make up my mind. A Logan Franklin also. Like, there are a lot of guys, and I don't feel like making a top 10. Uh, as far as the top 5, you'll pretty much know who's going to be in that top 4. As far as fifth, we are not so sure. Could it be Brion Ainsley? And looking at this photo that Brion just posted, I, I was so impressed when I saw this. He looks actually pretty amazing. Like, he looks really hard, really round, really big for a classic guy. I like the beard, too. And the caption, I love the caption. He says, nothing has been out of the realm of what I will endure for this one. And he tags Mr. Olympia. So it looks like he found that mindset. I don't know if he had it before. I don't know if the mindset was the reason why he was not looking his best. But it looks like he has that crazy mindset. And again, you can kind of see that stuff in the faces of bodybuilders. You can see how crazy he is right now. And he's willing to do whatever it takes. And I gotta tell you, he looks amazing right here. In this, in this photo, he looks shredded, he looks big, he looks hard and round. This guy was Mr. Olympia champion in classic physique. Not for one year, but actually two years. One of few people who managed to beat Chris Bumstead. He was winning with Chris Bumstead in the lineup. He was beating a lot of guys. He was a great classic physique guy, great bodybuilder. But at this point in his career, at 43, I believe, I think he's not going to do really well because of the legs. Because his legs have atrophied, both of them, especially the right one. For some reason, his right leg is much smaller. And that's going to, that's going to affect the judges quite a bit. He cannot hide that with posing. He can hide it to a certain extent, but not to the point where the judges won't notice it. So they will notice, and that's why I think he's going to drop, like, all the way down to 7th or 8th or ninth. We'll see. 
somewhere around there is my prediction. Now, as far as the actual top five, I don't think it's about who's going to win the Mr. Olympia or who's going to beat Chris Bumstead. I think it's more exciting to think about who's going to, who can potentially beat Terence Ruffin for that second spot, because I think he's very firmly in that position. And based on this video, he looks like he's going to stay there. I mean, he's very conditioned. He's improved. Uh, Joe Bennett right there filming him, his coach, in the comment section said it. Terence is a couple of pounds heavier than his weight cap right now, so he needs to lose a few more pounds to fit the weight cap. So, you know, he's big and he wasn't that big last year and he's really conditioned. So I don't see him placing lower than second again. I think he's also very firmly in that position like Chris Bumstead. Now, as far as third, fourth, or fifth, that can vary. Like, Urs can beat Ramon. Ramon can beat Urs. There is a lot of other guys that might beat all of these guys. So we'll see about that third, fourth, fifth. But, you know, Logan Franklin, for example, I'm really curious why so many people have him in their top five because I don't really see it. I see great shape, great genetics, great uh, potential and great presentation, but I don't think he's up there with the other guys as far as in terms of muscularity, density, uh, muscle maturity and conditioning. So even though he has beautiful structure and so much potential, I don't really see him up there in, in top five. No, no, me personally, I don't. Whatever you guys think, you can tell me down below in the comment section. And if you guys enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up. And for more stuff like this, you can subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.